Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Welcome to the third video on Advanced Construction Materials course MKAE 1043. In this video, I will be talking about the application of geosynthetics in the construction of unpaved road as well as the application of geosynthetic in the construction of retaining structure. Before that, allow me to summarize what I had discussed in the second video. In the second video, I mentioned about the uh, properties of geosynthetics, namely physical and mechanical properties of geosynthetics. The properties that I mentioned in the second video include specific gravity, thickness, mass per unit area, flexibility or stiffness, uh, tensile strength, confined tensile strength, fatigue strength, compressibility, as well as uh, puncture strength. As I mentioned previously, in this video, I will be talking about the application of geosynthetic in the construction of unpaved roads, as well as the application of geosynthetic in the construction of retaining structure. So this photo shows uh, geosynthetic sheets are being laid in the construction of road or highway. Now, this photo shows the utilization of geosynthetic sheets to form retaining structure in the uh, slope stabilization work. Uh, this diagram shows a typical cross section of layers in the construction of normal road or highway. So the uh, layer A represents the subgrade or the foundation soil. Layer B represents what we call subbase. Layer C is the base course. Layer D binder course. Layer E wearing course, normally asphalt concrete or concrete slab. And F here is just like a filler, normally sand. But in this video, I will be talking about the application of a geosynthetic material which will be laid on top of this subgrade or foundation layer and then aggregates will be placed on top of this geosynthetic. In other words, I will not be talking about different layers of B, C, D and E. This photo shows geosynthetic sheets are being laid on top of soft cohesive soil and aggregates are being placed on top of these geosynthetic sheets. In this case, these geosynthetic sheets act as separator as well as provide reinforcement. By having this geosynthetic material, mixture between soft cohesive soil and the aggregate can be prevented. In addition to that, this geosynthetic will redistribute the stresses so that the wearing capacity of the soft soil can be increased. This chart produced by Giroud and Nure, which I took from Haussmann 1990, can be used to determine the thickness of aggregate when geosynthetic materials is being used in the construction of unpaved road. The x-axis represents the value of the strength of the foundation soil or the subgrade, which are expressed in terms of uh, undrained shear strength for cohesive soil with the symbol of C sub U and the unit kilopascal. The values vary from 0 to 120 kPa. In addition to that, the strength of the foundation soil can be expressed in terms of CDR or in other words, known as California bearing ratio, with the values vary from zero up to four. The y-axis represents the value of required aggregate thickness when geosynthetic is not being applied. In this case, the required thickness without geosynthetic is represented by H sub naught prime with the unit of meter. In addition to that, the y-axis also can be used to determine the reduction in aggregate thickness, delta H, with the unit of meter if geosynthetic is being employed. This chart should be used together with uh, these uh, conditions. P 
equals to P sub S represent a single axle load for construction vehicle equals to 80 kN and then the maximum rut equals to 0 0.3 meter and P sub C represent the tire pressure of the construction vehicle equal to 480 kPa. The relatively thick curves represent the anticipated or expected number of passages of the construction vehicles. This curve represents n equals to 10 passages. This curve represents n equals to 100 passages, 1000 and 10,000. The relatively thin curves with the numbers range from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 represent the geotextile modulus. Curve number 1 represents a geotextile with the modulus of E equals to 450 kN per meter, number 2, 400 kN per meter, and so forth. So the relatively thin curve you can see here. Number one, go up. These curves represents number one, 450 kilonewton per meter. And then number two here, quite uh, difficult to see, right? And then number three here, number four, and Number uh, number five, lastly number six. There are several steps that we have to follow in order to determine the thickness of aggregate to be used in the construction of unpaved road if geosynthetic materials is being applied as separator as well as for reinforcement. First, we have to determine the strength of the foundation soil or the subgrade where it's from 0 to 120 kPa or from 0 up to 4 in terms of CBR. So we can draw vertical lines to represent the strength of the foundation soil. Then we have to predict the number of uh, passages of the construction vehicle. Based on the number of passages, we refer to the appropriate N curve and then until it intersects with the vertical line, which represents uh, the uh, strength of the foundation soil, by finding the intersection point between the strength of the foundation soil and the number of passages of the construction vehicle, then we move to the left to obtain H naught prime, which represents the thickness of aggregate without geosynthetic or without geotextile. Then from the intersection point between the strength of the foundation soil and the selected geosynthetic material, move to the left, then we can obtain delta H to represent the reduction of aggregate thickness when geosynthetic material is being applied. By employing geosynthetic materials or geotextile in the construction of unpaved road, the required thickness of the aggregate can be determined by finding the difference between the required aggregate thickness without geotextile and the reduction in the thickness of aggregate with the utilization of geotextile. Or in other words, the required thickness of the aggregate with the employment of geotextile in the construction of unpaved road equals to H naught minus delta H. Okay, let's take a look at an example how to use uh, this diagram or this chart. Let's say the number of passages of construction vehicles equals to 1000. 80 kN single axle load construction vehicle and the uh, tire inflation equals to 480 kPa. CBR of the foundation soil or the subgrade equals to 1, considered as soft soil. And then geotextile with the modulus 
E equals to 100 kilonewton per meter is selected in the construction of the unpaved road and the allowable rod equals to 0 0.3 meter. The problem here is what is the required aggregate thickness of an unpaved road with the use of geotextile? So we have to refer to this diagram. Based on CBR equals to 1 and number of passages N equals to 1000. So CBR1, draw a vertical line here. And then n equals to 1000. This is n equal to this is uh, this is n equals to 1000. So we find the intersection point between CBR equals to 1 and curve n equals to 1000. So approximately here, move to the left, approximately the value h sub naught prime equals to 0 0.46 meter. Next is to determine the reduction in aggregate thickness. Before that, H sub naught prime here represents the thickness of aggregate without geotextile. The next step is to find the reduction in aggregate thickness with the use of geosynthetic or geotextile. Again, with CBR equals to 1 and geotextile with the modulus equals to 100 kilonewton per meter. 100 kilonewton per meter, if you look at this diagram here, E equals to 100 kilonewton per meter is indicated by number 5. So we refer to this curve, number 5, the relative, uh, relatively thin curve, number 5. We have to find the intersection between CBR equals to 1 and E equals to 100. So this is the vertical line. We're up until it uh, made E equal to 100 kilonewton per meter. From the intersection point, we move to the left. The value approximately 0 0.17. This 0 0.17 represents the reduction in aggregate thickness delta H. This delta H equals to 0 0.17. So by uh, employing geosynthetic material in the construction, the required thickness of the aggregate equals to 0 0.46 minus 0 0.17 meter equals to 0 0.29 meter. So based on this example, we can see that without geosynthetic or geotextile, the required thickness is 0 0.46 meter. But with the employment of geotextile, with the modulus equals to 100 kilonewton per meter, the required thickness of the aggregate is reduced to 0 0.29 meter. Keep in mind that there are hundreds of manufacturers of geosynthetics around the globe. So if you are required to design roads using geosynthetic material, I will recommend that you refer to the uh, table or charts provided by manufacturer of the geosynthetic materials. This chart may not be uh, valid if you use different types of geosynthetic material. Now let's move on to the construction of retaining structure using geosynthetics as reinforcement. There are several types of retaining structure or retaining walls such as uh, cantilever retaining wall, creep wall, gabion, reinforced earth wall, and so on. When geosynthetic materials are being used to construct retaining structure or retaining wall, there are several factors that we have to take into consideration. First, backfill material is granular soil such as sand. By having granular material or free draining material like sand, we would anticipate that the development of poor water pressure behind the retaining structure can be neglected. Second item is facing or skin of the wall is formed by lapping the geosynthetic sheets. If we look at this diagram, the geosynthetic sheet is being laid on the foundation soil and then backfill or sand will be placed on top of this geosynthetic and then this geosynthetic is being used to wrap the sand. 
Then the second geosynthetic uh, sheet is being placed on top of the sand. Then sand or granular material again will be placed on top of the geosynthetic and this geosynthetic will be used to wrap the backfill material. So the process is being uh, repeated until the uh, required height. Uh, item number three is the lab length equal to L sub L. The lab length is indicated by L sub L in this diagram here, measured from the facing of this retaining structure to the end of this geosynthetic sheet here. Uh, item number four that we have to consider is design procedures are practically similar to reinforced earth wall. I will show you the photo of reinforced earth wall later. Let's take a look at this diagram. This diagram shows the typical or general schematic diagram representing a retaining wall. So this is the retaining wall. And then we have a backfill material here. And this backfill material will exert lateral force to the wall. So the lateral force is calculated based on the area of this stress or pressure diagram. The lateral stress behind the retaining wall is related to the vertical stress of the backfill material. So the vertical stress is calculated as sigma equals to gamma multiplied by z where gamma here is the unit width of the material and z here is the depth measured from the top surface of the soil downward. Assuming we have uniform sand as the backfill material with the unit width gamma, the vertical stress behind the retaining wall increased linearly because we have uniform sand with uniform unit width. So the stress will increase linearly with depth. That's how we determine the vertical stress behind the retaining wall due to the backfill material. The lateral stress, as I mentioned before, is related to the vertical stress. This triangle behind the retaining structure represents the lateral stress. So at any elevation, the lateral stress can be calculated as gamma multiplied by z multiplied by k sub a. So as we go deeper until the base of this retaining wall, the lateral stress is calculated as gamma multiplied by H multiplied by K sub A, where H here is the height of the retaining wall or the depth of the backfill material from the top surface to the base of the retaining structure. The force is represented by the area of this triangle. So since we have the height here equals to H and the base here equals to gamma H K A, the area equals to one half gamma H K A multiplied by H, so it becomes one half gamma H squared K A. This diagram can be related to the retaining structure using geosynthetic material as a reinforcement. Let's take a look at this diagram. By having several geosynthetic sheets at different elevation, a retaining structure is formed. Based on Rankine's theory, we assume that the failure plane makes an angle of 45 degree plus P over 2 with respect to horizontal. Again, here the distance from the face to the end of this geosynthetic uh, represents the lab length which is L sub L and then from the face to the failure surface is represented by L sub R and then from the failure surface to the end of the geosynthetic sheets is represented by capital L sub capital E. The vertical spacing between geosynthetic sheets is represented by S sub V. In order to make sure the internal stability of this retaining structure, we have to make sure that the geosynthetic materials is strong enough against tensile breaking due to the lateral force from the soil or from the backfill. Besides that, we have to make sure that LE must be 
sufficiently long to provide friction between geosynthetic material and the backfill material to resist pull out failure. Again, this photo shows the utilization of geosynthetic material to form a retaining structure. This photo shows what we call reinforced earth wall. Instead of a geosynthetic materials as the facing, here we have concrete panels as the facing. So each concrete panel here or the facing is being held by metal strips. The metal strips together with the backfill material normally sand will provide friction. So the friction will resist pull out failure due to the uh, force by the backfill material. In this slide, we can see photos uh, showing geosynthetic materials are being used to form a retaining structure. Now let's take a look at the uh, steps that we have to uh, follow in order to design retaining structure using geosynthetics. First is to determine the active pressure distribution on the wall. The active pressure or lateral pressure is given as sigma sub A equals to Ka multiplied by sigma sub B. So we can expand this equation becomes Ka multiplied by gamma multiplied by Z. If you remember, sigma sub B in the previous slide represent the vertical stress equals to unit weight of the soil multiplied by the depth. So Ka here, this is what we call coefficient of lateral stress or coefficient of active pressure equals to tangent squared 45 degrees minus phi over 2. So this, these are the definition of the items in the equation. Gamma here is the unit weight of the backfill material. And phi here represents the internal friction angle of backfill material. A second step, we have to select a geosynthetic fabric with a strength of sigma sub g, for example, with the unit of kilonewton per meter. Step number three, we have to determine the vertical spacing of the layers at any depth. So the vertical spacing, if we refer to uh, this diagram, vertical spacing between geosynthetic sheet here is given as S sub B equals to sigma sub G divided by sigma sub A multiplied by F S Y. So this equation can be expanded becomes sigma sub g, sigma sub g, remain as sigma sub g, divided by sigma sub a, refer back to the previous equation, equals to Ka gamma z. So gamma z multiplied by Ka, and then multiplied by Fs uh, F sub y. Fs sub y here represents safety factor against tie breaking or against tensile failure of the fabric or the geosynthetic material. Normally, the safety factor ranges from 1.3 to 1.5. The safety factor here is quite low, 1.3 to 1.5, because if you remember what I said in the previous video, geosynthetic materials are materials with control properties, controlled characteristics, and controlled quality. So we are quite confident with the uh, ability of the material. Therefore, we use slightly low safety factor. Step number four is to determine the length of each layer of the fabric. The length is given as capital L equals to L sub R plus L sub E. Let's take a look at this uh, diagram. L sub R is measured from the facing of the retaining structure to the assumed failure surface. We can observe that the value of L sub R varies with depth. As we go higher, the value of L sub R increases. Based on this triangular, L sub R is given as capital H minus Z divided by tangent 45 degrees plus phi over 2. So H is the height of the wall from the top surface to the base of this retaining wall. That is the capital H minus Z. Z is measured from the top surface downward. And tangent 45 degrees plus phi over 2 represents the 
uh, angle between the failure surface and the horizontal. So we can see that the value of LR varies with depth. For convenience, L sub R can be calculated as H multiplied by tangent 45 degrees minus V over 2. So if we use this equation, we will get similar length of L sub R. So you can choose whether you want to have a different value of L sub R, which varies with depth, or this equation. Next, we have to determine the effective length, which is represented by capital L sub E. If you refer to this diagram, L sub E is measured from the assumed failure surface to the end of the geosynthetic sheet. Okay. So L sub E is given as S sub V, that is the vertical spacing between, the, uh, between geosynthetic sheets. And then sigma sub A again equals to gamma multiplied by Z multiplied by K sub A. Then multiply by F S sub V divided by 2 sigma sub V tangent V sub F. Okay. F S sub V here represents the safety factor against pull out. So the value of F S V equals to 1.3 to 1.5. This V sub F represents the interface friction angle between geosynthetic materials and the backfill materials. Normally, the value of V sub F is slightly lower than the value of V. Lastly is the lap length, L sub L, which is measured from the facing to the end of this geosynthetic material here. So L sub L normally is given as S sub V multiplied by sigma sub A multiplied by F S sub V divided by 4 sigma sub V tangent V sub F. If we compare between L sub L and L sub E, we can see that L sub E is two times longer than L sub L. Okay, so those are the steps that we have to follow in order to design a retaining structure involving geosynthetic material. Okay, those are the materials that I want to share with you in this video. Until we meet again in other videos on geosynthetics, thank you.